Hello and welcome to the next edition of the HP Discover podcast series. I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at InterArbor Solutions, your host and moderator for this ongoing discussion on IT innovation and how it's making an impact on people's lives. Once again, we're focusing on how companies are adapting to the new style of IT to improve IT performance, gain new insights, and deliver better user experiences as well as better overall business results. This time, we're coming to you directly from the HP Discover 2014 conference in Barcelona. We're here the week of December 1st to learn directly from IT and business leaders alike how big data changes everything for IT, for businesses, and governments, as well as for you and me. Our next innovation interview explores the use of a hackathon approach to unlock creativity in the search for better use of data for analytics. We'll hear how Thomson Reuters in London sought to foster innovation and derive more value from its vast trove of business and market data. The result? A worldwide virtual hackathon that brought together developers and data scientists to uncover new applications, visualizations, and services to make data actionable and impactful. To learn more about getting developers on board the big data analysis gravy train, please join me in welcoming our guest. We're here with Chris Blatchford, Director of Platform Technology in the IT organization at Thomson Reuters in London. Welcome, Chris. Hi, good to be here. So tell us one about Thomson Reuters, your organization, uh, for those who don't know. Sure. So Thomson Reuters are the leader in professional market data. We provide data across the finance, legal, news, IP and science, and tax and accounting industries, and have many, many products and services which uh, service many of our clients across the world. It's hard to think of an organization where data and analysis is more important. It's so core to your very mission. Absolutely. Uh, we take data from a variety of sources. We have our own original data, uh, data sources, for example, our journalists in the field providing news uh, stories to us directly. We have third-party licensed data. We have client data that we ingest. And we also have open data. Uh, and once we've got that data, obviously, it's very important that we can perf perform meaningful analysis on that information. And therein lies the, uh, the next trick, uh, what to do with the data once you have it. So... How about this hackathon? How did you come up upon that as an idea to, to foster innovation? So one of our big projects or one of our big programs of work currently is, as everyone else is doing, big data. And we have an initiative called BOLD, which is big, open, linked data. Uh, and the idea behind that is to take all of the data that we have within Thomson Reuters, all of those various sources that I just explained, pull all of those into a central repository, cleanse the data, centralize it, and expose it to the rest of the businesses. Now, in doing so, we also need to provide analytics and applications and big data tools for the businesses to use that data. So we could demonstrate we had the data. We know we've got the data. That's what we do. That's our bread and butter. Uh, we could demonstrate that we could build big data tools using our internal expertise, and we could demonstrate that we could plug in third-party specific applications that could perform analysis on that data. What we hadn't proved was that we could plug in third-party technology platforms in order to leverage that data, to innovate across that data. And that's where HP came in. HP were already engaged with us uh, in a number of areas. Uh, and I got to speaking with their enterprise services group uh, around their big data solutions. Idle On Demand came up, which is now part of the Haven On Demand uh, platform. Uh, and we saw some synergies there between what we were doing with uh, the big data platform and what they could offer us in terms of their idle on demand platform. And that's where the, uh, the, the good stuff started. Now, uh, software developers for the, from the very beginning have had a challenge of knowing their craft but not knowing necessarily what their end users want them to do with that craft. And so the, the, the challenge has often been, whether it's in a data environment or a uh, transactional environment or uh, interface uh, or gaming. Uh, how do you get the requirements of what you're up to into the minds of the developers in a way that they can work with? So how did a hackathon contribute to solving that? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. That's actually one of the biggest challenges big data has in general. Um, you, you approach big data in one of two ways, or we approach big data in one of two ways. You have very specific use cases uh, say you're a lawyer and you need some uh, case information, you're working on a current uh, case and you need a similar case information to understand how uh, that case uh, 
concluded. So that's a very specific case. You can look at data there, you can pull entities out, you can pull attributes, you can extract information and look at what was relevant in that particular scenario. You've, got the, you've then got the other approach, which is uh, much more about exploring the data. Uh, and that's the, that's the approach we wanted to take with the hackathon. Provide the data, provide the tools to our developers for them just to go and play with the data. We didn't necessarily want to give them any requirements around a specific products or services. It was just like, look, here's a, here's a cool platform with some really cool APIs and some capabilities. Here's some you know, nice juicy data. Tell us what, you, you know, what we should be doing. What can we come up with from your perspective on the world? Because a lot of the time, these guys and girls, they, you know, they get overlooked. They're not necessarily the most um, uh, outgoing people by the nature of what they do. Uh, and so they, they, they miss the chances, they miss opportunities, and that's something we really, really wanted to uh, promote. So it's fascinating. The way to get developers to do what you want them to do is to give them no requirements. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, and that, and that can result in some uh, interesting uh, end products sometimes around uh, uh, Oculus Rifts or, uh, yeah, anyway, mm. VR tools. But, um, so what, what did you get when you gave them no requirements? What happened? So um, we had 25 teams that um, submitted their ideas. Uh, we boiled that down to seven teams, seven finalists. Um, and out of those seven, uh, we uh, chose three winners, if you like, um, because they're all equally good. Uh, and those three end results were uh, actually taken or are currently going through a product review. Now, those uh, three end uh, applications were a unique new uh, user interface or user experience that we're looking at uh, deploying into other products that we have. Uh, there was a sentiment analysis tool which allowed uh, users to paste in news stories or any, any news content source on the web uh, and extract sentiment from that news story. Uh, and the other one was more of an internally focused um, administrative exploration tool which al allowed us to uh, more intuitively navigate our own data, which was, you know, sounds a little bit more uh, kind of tired, but it's actually a hugely uh, useful application for us. Mm. Now, um, how does uh, Idle on Demand come to play in this? Idle being uh, the ability to take any kind of information for the most part uh, apply a variety of different services to it and then create analysis as a service. How, how did that play into the hackathon? How did the developers use that? So in, initially, uh, the developers looked at the original, the 50 plus APIs that Idle on Demand provides and you've got everything in there from facial recognition to OCR to uh, text analytics to uh, indexing, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, that provided, <coughs> excuse me, um, sufficient capabilities in themselves to produce some compelling applications. But what you're also able to do is create uh, your own APIs, in a sense, create your own workers. And HP Enterprise Services uh, also had a role in this. How did that provide value? Really, the expertise. Um, we should remember we stood this hackathon up uh, from inception to completion in one month. And that's, I think, pretty impressive by anyone's uh, measure. Uh, the actual hackathon itself lasted for five days. Um, we gave the guys and gals a uh, week to get familiar with the APIs, but they really didn't need that long because the documentation behind the APIs on Idle On Demand uh, and the uh, kind of try it now uh, functionality that it has was, was amazing. Uh, and this is the, the, the engineers and the developers telling me that's not my own words. Um, so really, uh, the, the enterprise services group um, enabled us to stand this whole thing up within a month, a huge amount of effort on the HP side uh, that we never really saw, that ultimately resulted in, in a a hugely successful virtual global hackathon. This, this wasn't a physical hackathon. This is, this is a purely virtual hackathon the world over. So, of course, uh, HP, having been very close to developers for many years with many tools, leading tools in the market for developers, they're familiar with the hackathon approach. Uh, it sounds like HP might have a business in hackathons as a service. Uh, you're proving the point here. Uh, but tell us, perhaps, for the um, benefit of our listeners, if someone one else out there was interested in applying the same approach, a hackathon as a way of creating innovation, of, of sparking uh, new thoughts, light bulbs going off in people's heads, or bringing together cultures that perhaps hadn't meshed well in the past. Uh, but what would you advise them? Wow, that's a, that's a big one. I, I think first and for, foremost, the reason we were successful is because we had a, a hugely powerful partner. Uh, we had, a, you know, and, and that's in HP. Uh, they were able to put the full might of their resources and technology 
um, capabilities behind this. Um, that aside, um, you, you need to get the buy-in of the, the senior executives within an organization, get them uh, bought into the idea of something as open as a hackathon. A lot of hackathons are quite focused on a specific requirement. Um, we, we took the opposite approach. We said, look, developers, engineers, go out there and do whatever you want. So try to be as um, innovative in your approach as possible. Uh, there's a lot of logistical uh, things that, that can help. Yeah, it really sounds like a winning combination. The hackathon model, big data as the resource to innovate on, and then idle on demand with 50 tools to apply to that. It's a very rich combination. Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly right. I mean, the data, the richness in the data was definitely um, a big part of this. You don't need you know, millions of rows of data. We, we provide 60,000 records of legal documents, and we had uh, you know, about the same in patents and intellectual property documentation. You don't need huge, vast amounts of data, but you need quality data. And then you also need a quality uh, platform as well in this case, uh, idle on demand with the APIs. Mm -hmm. And that you know, gives, gives the developers the two things they really need. That, you know, the third piece is, is what's in their heads. So that really was you know, the successful formula. Yeah. Now I have to ask, uh, of course, the pride in doing a good job goes a long way, but were there any other incentives? Uh, a new car, for example, for the winning hackathon uh, application of the day? Yeah, we uh, offered a 1960s Mini uh, to the winners. No, uh, we, we, did, we did offer um, other incentives. Um, there was three main incentives, actually. The, the first one, and the most important one in my view, um, and I think in everyone's view, uh, was exposure to senior executives within the organization. Um, again, going back to trying to leverage your resources and give them opportunities to shine, that's really important. That's one of the things that Hackathon really uh, fosters is, is bringing people up to the top of, um, top of the chain. Uh, two and three, we uh, provided a uh, Amazon voucher incentive, so there's kind of a cash incentive there. And HP also kindly uh, offered uh, some of their tablets to the winners. So it was, you know, it was quite a, quite a strong winning set. Sounds like a very successful endeavor. Others out there might be interested in emulating, so I'm glad we could find out more about it. I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. We've been learning about how Thomson Reuters in London sought to foster innovation and derive more value from its vast trove of business and market data, and how they used a virtual worldwide hackathon approach to bring together developers and data scientists to uncover new applications and services. So a big thank you to our guest. We've been joined here with Chris Blatchford, the Director of Platform Technology in the IT organization at Thomson Reuters in London. Thank you, Chris. Thanks. And I'd like to thank our audience as well for joining us for this special new style of IT discussion coming to you directly from the IT, uh, from rather from the HP Discover 2014 conference in Barcelona. We've explored solid evidence from early adopters of how big data changes everything for IT, for businesses and governments, as well as for you and me. I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at Inter Arbor Solutions, your host for this ongoing series of HP-sponsored discussions. Thanks again for listening, and come back next time.